I think you'll be able to see this from that view. Um, this is the spun needle clamp foot by Simanco. And I actually found another um, vintage similar attachment. I've only been able to find one of them. and um, But it's similar to this. Now, so this is just a rough thing, but I kind of made my own. But this is copper wire. And on this one, what happens is when it goes down, it stays down. It doesn't come back up. So I would need to make this out of some kind of steel um, to make my own. But um, my first inspiration um, for thinking I could do hand crank embroidery without a hoop was through Christiana's work. So she had originally done a fish. There's an outline of a fish. And what I was having problems with when I tried to do a fish were curves. And, you know, that was when I was first trying any kind of hand crank embroidery, which was, believe it or not, I think a week and a half ago. Um, this is going to help with curves. Now, the, my machine happens to be a fast machine. So, what this foot does is that. It holds it where you put it so that you can then make your next stitch slowly. So this is a very tiny fish. It's not big enough to have big um, fins. And you can see I'm not really holding it down tightly, but it is puckering a little bit. And there are the beginnings of learning how to make curves on, in hand crank embroidery. I love this foot. It was expensive. Um, and I got it cheaper than most. Now, I did have to fiddle a little with the upper tension. Um, but I think that was just my machine. So see, there's the beginning of learning how to make curves. And this foot helps. Now, I'll show you how it goes fast when you're going fast. If you were doing just straight line filling in, you have to watch out for the needle clamp. Which is why I should have the tool over here, because the tool actually helps. I love this foot. I really think it's an advantage, and it changes how my 66 was working before as far as hand crank embroidery. It's wonderful.